us um, every Sunday, um, Jesus GCC, Grace Community Church, um, Red Hill, um, Church Online. It's a privilege. It's okay, can we have a word of prayer? Father, we thank you. We bless your name. What an honor, what a privilege, what a joy it is to be in your presence. And this morning, may we experience your presence as never before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you once again. If for any reason you are in need or you need to talk, then please dial the hope line on the screen. Um, as well, if you, uh, as I mentioned again, if you are in need financially or spiritually or emotionally, uh, please go ahead and um, we'll be happy to talk. Um, we'll be happy to talk you through. At this point, sit back. Let's enjoy the worship. Um, their worship and praise as we go before the presence of the Lord. More power to you. See you in a few minutes. shall know that your tent is at peace and you shall inspect your fold and miss nothing you shall know also that your offspring shall be many and the descendants like the grass of the earth you shall come to your grave in ripe old age like a sheaf gathered up in its season behold this we have searched out it is true here and known it is for your good good morning Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to Grace Community Church Redhill where we are delighted to have you join us this Sunday morning and so we'd like to take this opportunity to encourage you to give your offerings and your tithing. You see here at Grace Community Church we're a Bible believing giving church and as such your offerings and your tithing not only helps us not only aids us to help the community, but it helps us further the kingdom of God at large. And so we have an updated charity account, the details of which are Grace Community Church Red Hill, the account number 039-398-04, the number again 039-398-04. The sort code 208813. The number again 208813. God bless you abundantly as you give. Welcome once again and enjoy the rest of the service. Can be trusted in all of your 
Just someone begin to worship his holy name because he is, he is, he is the greatest of all. The Bible described that it is him who rides, and the one who rides is faithful and true. So, unto him who is faithful and true, let's begin to lift up the name of the living God. Father, Lord, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Wherever you are, don't stop worshiping. Begin to lift up his name. Because if not for him, we don't know where would we be. Where would we be? Let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side, where would we be? Where would we be? We worship you. Oh, receive your worship, Lord. Oh, be magnified. Oh, be glorified. Someone begin to lift up his name, oh, be magnified, Father, we worship you, we worship you, why, oh, you are the reason why I lift my hand, why I lift my voice, and why I sing to you. It's all because of you, someone say You are the reason, you are the reason Why I lift my hand Why I lift my voice And why I sing to you oh, You are the reason, you are the reason Are you? 
alone by yourselves wherever you are. So you alone, for you alone are holy. For you alone are worth. Deserve the glory, my Jesus. You are. is worth a thousand years spent elsewhere. No wonder David said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's always a pleasure. Right, for today, um, again, it's, um, it's a pleasure for us to come to you with the word of the Lord. And uh, please pick up your Bibles, your iPads, your notepads, if you can, um, your your phones, um, if you have your old Bible as well, please join me and pick it up. And come with me to the book of Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25 and I'm reading from verses 1 through to 10 uh, and this morning I'm speaking on the team the extra oil the extra oil um, members of Grace Community Church might have heard me preach this message but I never got a chance to complete it so I will do a brief recap and then would zoom into the core of my message this morning. So Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 and shall we hear the word of the Lord and the kingdom of heaven would be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Uh, verses 2, now five of them were foolish and five were wise. Verses 3, those who took those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Verses 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. 5. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. 6. And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. 7. Then all the virgins who were ready arose, trimmed their lamps, and guess what? They went out. To meet the man. Um, eight and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. Nine, but the wise answered, Say no, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Verses 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Eleven. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Twelve, but the answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Uh, thank you once again for making the time to tune in. So, a brief about Matthew chapter, the scripture we just read, I'm sure most of us are very familiar with this. Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 25. Um, um, it's, it's a parable, one of the parables of Jesus, which represents three um, characters you have character number one which is the bridegroom and then character number two and three um, is that of virgins however categorized into foolish and then into wise and then foolish virgins um, and basically the two groups of virgins uh, the wise represented the prepared and then the foolish represented the unprepared now is is preparation is is a very important thing because to be present and not to be prepared is a bad thing it's as it's as useless as not showing up at all right so here comes an opportunity here comes the the open door here comes the open window and guess what um, here are the ten uh, the five foolish ones saying we aren't prepared and bear in mind this uh, it costed them you know it, it costed them their energy their time their effort to prepare for this gallant occasion 
Now, it is worth me mentioning at this point that in biblical times, in Jewish, well, let me put it this way, under the Jewish setting, uh, under the Jewish culture, if you remember the story about um, the miracle at Cana, Jesus' first miracle in which you turn water into wine. Um, so Jewish weddings um, uh, involved a lot of preparation. And by the way, uh, because they involve, they involve a lot of preparation, they also carry on for long days. Um, there, are, there are some Jewish weddings, even to date, they carry on for days. I'm, I'm talking of days as a week and you know various celebrations going on and on and on and therefore preparation matters a lot for the average jewish wedding and by the way for the a jewish wedding that fails to go that, that does not go right is is considered as bad omen or bad luck for for the marriage see so they would spend a fortune they would spend their time their effort their resource they would place the money to making sure that the wedding is, is going well and that everything is going right. So, in this particular scripture, and again, don't forget, we're talking about um, the Jewish and that Jesus, Jesus cited this parable under the Jewish Jewish setting. So, what happened under the Jewish Jewish setting was that um, the bridegroom uh, would gather uh, beautiful women, uh, uh, the the um, the bridesmaid. Uh, the groom, sorry, the bride, the bridegroom. They would, they would gather bridesmaid, um, and most of the, so the bridesmaid mostly are virgins, right? And their primary primary role is to lead the bridegroom into the arena, uh, to lead the bridegroom into the uh, place of, of of the event, into the place of the uh, the banquet event, and. Um, as well, uh, bear in mind we're talking of biblical times. Uh, uh, the the bridegroom also had a habit. The average Jewish bridegroom in biblical times, in Jesus' time, had a habit of not announcing their their specific time of showing up. You know, so then again, it, it, it the responsibility is on the bride. It's, it's on the it's on the bridesmaid, uh, the women in question, to be prepared all the time. Uh, whether the the whether the bride the bridegroom is announcing the time he will be showing up or not, the responsibility is to make sure that they are fully prepared all the time without fail. Okay, so um, again, I'm going to do a brief catch up uh, on this, and then um, uh, as I want to get to the specifics of my message. So the U.S. Coast Guard um, has a, has a motto. Their motto is "Semper Paratus," um, which simply translates from latin simple practice in latin means always prepared always prepared always prepared and i believe there is no better time for us to especially for believers for 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 christians to remind ourselves that regardless of the times and the seasons we find ourselves you know be pre-covid be it covid or be it post-covid we need to be prepared all the time without an if you know without with no excuses um a few days ago, I was having a catch up with my mom, and uh, she was expressing her worry as to how people are, are passing on. You know, um, you know, people go to sleep, friends, colleagues, and then you know they wake up next day, they are gone. And um, as they, as we carried on talking, the conclusion was, look, um, I guess um, it is the key for us, the lesson in here is to make sure that we are prepared always, all the time, right, all the time, without you know. Be, be, be in season out of season so much so that you know if if Christ did you show up today uh, we'll be ready to go with him you know without if without any if or when or please give me this time or no it must be now and now now so um, always prepare don't forget that and I believe one of the core messages that this parable teaches us is to be prepared always all the time you know at, at the least notice we should be ready to go Right. So it brings me back again to the core of the message. Don't forget, ten women were selected. Ten beautiful women. Ten beautiful women. Now, uh, you would again agree with me that uh, um, the, the 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 bridegroom uh, was interested in, in in not just beautiful women, but was interested in uh, in virgins, right? And uh, I, I believe I talked about this. 
um, the last time when I briefly shared on uh, on this sermon, um, and that for being a bridegroom is is a symbol of consistency, is a symbol of purity, is a symbol of honor, is a symbol of um, of glory. Uh, now let me let me pick out the word consistency in here and share a brief on it, and that to the bridegroom, regardless of the race, regardless, regardless of the background, regardless of the creed of these women, um, he, he was after one thing, and that was, you know, um, ladies who had been consistent. And I believe one of the things that uh, Christ demands of us um, as a royal priesthood, as a holy nation, as Peter the apostle put it, that uh, in First Peter chapter 2, verses 9, that ye are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of his darkness into his wonderful light right uh, one of the one of the hallmarks of um, of that we, that is expected of us is to make sure that we are consistent in our service to him we are consistent in the way we do our things we are consistent in our fellowship with the Lord right so uh, I am mindful of um, uh, mindful of time and uh, me wanting to get to a question of today's message. Don't forget, so the, the women were consistent, right? So, um, as well, like I said, they were pure. Now, we live, we live in a world now where there is so much, um, there is so much compromises, and I truly want to encourage your yeah, brother and sister, a friend, a colleague doing the listening this morning that we want to make sure that, look, we stand, we, 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 we don't compromise our walk and our stand with the Lord. In the book of Psalms of Solomon, the scriptures read that the, that the little foxes they destroy the vineyard, right? Uh, and, 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 and then with time, the whole vineyard is gone. And slowly, it is alarming, it's a bit concerning how, how standards are being compromised in, our, you know, in the Christian world today. And I just wanted to, I just want to encourage you, I just want to remind ourselves this morning that the standards of God have not changed. Right? Times may have changed, but the standards have been changed. His standard of holiness, his standard of walking upright, his standard of being obedient, his standard of 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 um, of walking according to his will has not changed. So, people of God, uh, may I may I just remind us this morning that his standards have not changed. Right, systems may have changed, uh, processes may have changed, but the standards of God have not changed. Right, so uh, the five, the, the, the ten women, they were pure. Right? Holiness uh, these days, um, I guess, if um, if um, if if uh, I guess we, but they, we, we don't often hear sermons around holiness, around um, around um, uh, purity, around um, walking in the light. But look, these are the good old wells that. Were, were presented to us and I'm sure you remember uh, the good old messages about being pure, being holy, right, being upright before God. And I truly want, I truly pray that God brings us back to those old wells. His, the systems have no change. No, 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 no. Systems have no change. And that it is, it is, it is, it is alarming how the devil is waging war against the standards of God. You know, almost every every standard is being fought against and by standard I mean the holiness I mean the standard of uh, the standard of purity I mean the standard of um, the standard of worship um, the standard of the Lord um, the Lord's Supper you know and it is about time we go back take me back take me back take me back to those wells anyway so purity I've talked about consistency I've talked about purity right and as well I remember they were 10 they were 10 women now so you know 10 represents perfection right so uh, this is God saying to us that look he brought together 10 women and he takes me back again to the scripture read in first Peter 2 verse 9 that he are a holy nation chosen by God you see God never makes them never makes a mistake the fact that we are we are alive and well. He has brought us into the kingdom at such a time as this. It's a sign that we're in the perfect will of God. We've come in at a perfect opportune time as we find ourselves today. So 
I just want to remind us this morning that don't forget consistency, purity, and as well perfection, right? The number 10. So he chose 10 beautiful women and he brought them together, right? For such a time as this. May I as well remind you that we've brought we've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. For in John chapter 9, Jesus says, While it is day, I must do the works of the one who sent me. Um, it is very important that. Look, with every passing time, every passing minute, every passing day, um, we the kingdom awaits us to manifest the works of the one who sent us. Right? So, 10 beautiful women. And guess what? Uh, when they were chosen by God, um, they were oh, sorry, when they were chosen by the by the bride, by the bridegroom, uh, their responsibility was one, and the responsibility was ladies, go get yourselves ready. And then on such a day and a time, I, the bridegroom, will come and meet you and lead you to the banquet hall. Now, it takes me back again to First Peter chapter two, verses nine. You see, being chosen is a very special privilege. You know, the act of walking into this light is a very, very, very special grace that He's bestowed onto us. It's, it's unique in the sense that. Uh, scripture says, but um, I have uh, Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah, chapter uh, the book of Jeremiah reads that whilst you were a clot in your mother's womb, I knew you, I predestined you, right? And I've, I have I have pre chosen you. It's a very, very special privilege, and I'm sure these beautiful women, um, after they had had the call from the man or after they had received the invitation from the man, they were. They were joyous, they were, you know, they went home, informed their family members, they danced over it, they were they were very jubilant about it. And then in as much as they were jubilating and they were very happy with, with the call, some way, somehow five of them forgot about the, the the responsibility of the calling. And I believe, people of God, um, the one of the challenges we're experiencing in our current dispensation is how slowly we forgetting about the responsibility of the calling and therefore we witness a lot of abuse and a lot of excesses in the kingdom right but forgetting that the ultimate the ultimate the ultimate the ultimate and uh emphasis here the ultimate for him calling us into the kingdom right is that when all is said and done People of God, when all is said and done, if today God is to call me and then I, I is to, after I'm to close my eyes and is to take the breath out of me, when all is said and done, it's number one, make sure that I don't miss the entry to heaven. That's the most important goal. When all is said and done, when all is said and done, is to make sure that you don't miss that moment, right? Like the, like the, um, like the man who met Jesus on the cross. Right, he may have messed up. He may have, you know, he may have wasted a lot of opportunities, but he made sure that for that particular moment, he was not going to miss it when all is said and done. And if I want to encourage somebody that let's have that, let's remind ourselves for the reason for bringing us into this light is to make sure that when all is said and done, when all is said and done, we we'll make it to heaven, and as well not just make it to heaven alone, but we we'll make it. Uh, with with uh, with, uh, with 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 by by extending an invitation to those we love, by extending an invitation to those you know to friends, to colleagues, to to known friends as well, to enemies as well. Right. So don't forget the ultimate. Right. So let's 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 get the let's get the foundation. Right. The ultimate reason why the bridegroom extended the invitation to the ladies was not for fun. Was not to go home, sing, dance, and 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 jubilate, right? No, that was well, that that they they that, that was you know they did that, but the ultimate was that ladies, for instance, um, on 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 uh, on Sunday, on Sunday, um, the twenty third of August. This is just for illustration purpose. On Sunday, the twenty third of August, ladies, make sure that you join me for the banquet world event that is the crucifix of everything right so don't let the joy don't let the success of being elected neither do you do you allow the 
the um, like I said, the joy or the success or the um, um, the fact that you are part of the thing get into your head. That is good. Thank God for the thank God for that success. Thank God for that eliminate. Thank God for that opportunity. But don't forget that behind at the back of your at the back of your mind, you don't lose sight of the bigger bigger picture. The bigger picture is that you no. Know, we make it to heaven that's a bit you know don't lose sight of that so that was the call for inviting or for or for electing those women right and today can i ask a very simple question to to the one doing the listening right how in tune for a brief moment let's have a roll call right let's do a brief roll call let's for a brief moment say you know what let's assume um uh, is 10 is 10 10 30, let's assume within the next 10 minutes. If Christ is to show up now, let's have a brief phone call. Will we be ready? Will you be ready to meet him? Are you prepared to meet him? Regardless of everything that's going on. Will we can we have our hands on our heart and say, you know what, Lord, yes, we are. We are we are we are we are we are we in that position to say, yes, Lord, I am. Now, if for any reason, if you are not in that position, I employ and plead with you that please make sure that you lay behind every weight that that pulls you behind and that you know draws you from getting to that stage where you are saying, Lord, I am ready. Right? So don't forget the bigger picture was to get to the banquet hall. Now, in between electing the beautiful ladies, the ten, the ten virgins, right, and uh, instructing them to say meet me on such a day and a time they have to go through a period of waiting a period of waiting and I I don't know but I'm sure in our journey in our journeys in life we've all had to encounter moments of waiting before now look let's face it let's be honest it's a difficult thing to go through a waiting moment oh it's so difficult it's so difficult right it's even more difficult when you have not been given the specifics but rather been given the general picture right so for instance you've gone for an interview right and you be your, 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 in your head you think you did very well you thought you've smashed it and you're waiting for the call and in those moments look you are anxious you are fretting you you you're having sleepless nights and it's so difficult right and and moments of waiting are not for the faint, it's not for the faint hearted. But bear in mind, it can take you years, right? Years of preparation just for one platform, years of preparation for just one opportunity. And between the opportunity coming your way, most times what the devil does, and he's a master of this, right? And what he does very well is that oftentimes, after we've been through years of waiting, and we've got into the verge of our manifestation. He comes around and he's, he's a master strategist of this. He's not changed the strategy. He shows up and his, his aim, his agenda is to distract you from the bigger picture. Let me give you a classic example. So in the book, in the book of um, in the book of First Samuel chapter 13, verses 13, classic example. So this is the this is the uh, prophet of God, Samuel, having warned Saul that, you know what, they were about to, they were in the middle of a battle with the Philistines. The battle was so fierce. And the prophet of God had, had specifically warned the king that came, uh, wait for me, king, so wait for me. We need to offer a sacrifice. So Lord, we've waited for such a time as this, but I need you to hold on. Right, until I come and then offer the sacrifice to God. So the prophet had left them for a brief moment and he, he, he said to him, just wait until I show up. And here in there were the Philistines, they were getting closer. And then the pressure of the military guys of Saul were saying to him, Saul, you need to offer the sacrifice. Saul, you need to act now. Saul, you need to act now. And it's so much, the pressure became so much that Saul, the king, failed to wait he couldn't wait anymore and guess what what he did was he decided he said to himself if the prophet of God can can offer why why can I also not do it so guess what he he slaughtered the sheep and the cattle and seldom barely 
he had barely finished the sacrifice, right? And guess what? The prophet of God showed up and listened to what the prophet of God said to him. Saul, you have acted foolishly. For what you've done, right? Because of what you've done, you're, you've, 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 as, as from today, you've lost the throne. Isn't it a painful that the king had waited for such an opportune time? And within a brief moment, within, within, within a few minutes, he had literally lost it. And not just lost it, but he lost it through. He lost the kinship. Everything he had worked hard for, everything he had prayed for, he lost it. Waiting is a difficult game. Waiting is a tough game. Especially when you are on the edge of receiving a promise or a manifestation. So remember, remember the, the mother of, um, of the prophet Samuel, right, by name Hannah. And Hannah, year upon year, would go make her way to the mountain top. And guess what? When she was most closest to her miracle, she had gone on her knees and she was praying to God. And then the prophet of God, by name Eli, heard the woman whispering. And then says to the woman, woman, you are drunk. You have, you have no respect for the things of God. And you've come into the temple and you are drunk and you are praying. And, and, and I think about that for a brief moment. This is, this is Hannah. She had waited. She had believed God for this moment. And just at the verge of the manifestation of a miracle, at that junction, look at the destruction she encounters. The prophet of God now says to her you are drunk but i love what han i love hannah's reaction right hannah had every right to be angry hannah had every right to be upset hannah had every right uh, to have a go at the prophet of god bear in mind then the prophet of god had his home in chaos his two sons were all over the place they were against the things of god and they were destroying the temple Literally, they had brought the image, the name of God into disrepute. And Hannah had every right to have a go at a prophet. But Hannah, at the back of her head, is saying, you know what? I have come too far. I have, I have waited for this opportunity for so long that I will not let moment of, of, uh, a moment of, 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 a moment of destruction, let me lose it. I refuse to speak against the prophet. I refuse to condemn or attack the prophet of God. Rather, I would just carry on and keep the focus. And oftentimes, we've seen how, in in so with so many, um, um, with so many stories and envisions and in, and even in, in in daily life, how sometimes you are so close. With, you know, individuals who are so close. I think I've shared this story before. Um, the story, the battle of uh, Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. And George Foreman, in the heat of the battle, he thought he had won it. He thought he had won it. And for a brief moment, for a brief moment, for a brief moment, he lost it. He had one of his camp men, one of his one of the guys in his camp, right? As 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 Muhammad Ali was knocking, was giving him a punch, one of the guys in his camp shout out, come on Ali. And he said, for a brief moment. And oftentimes it's the brief moment distraction. It's that brief moment. And you see, oftentimes all the devil needs is that least attention of yours. So you give him you, you what he seeks after is, is your attention. If you give him your attention, he will have every reason to direct you and to sway you off the plans and the purposes of God. And all he needs is that minute attention. And sometimes he comes to us with a whisper. And sometimes he comes to us with a thought. And sometimes he comes to us with a very juicy suggestion. Right? And like what? Like what Lazarus, when Jesus said, uh, when Jesus asked them, and that, well, roll away the stone. Look, guess the response of the people. They said, now Jesus, the master, is saying to them, roll away the stone. And they are saying to they are saying in return to Jesus, Jesus, he's dead and he's thinking. Now, Jesus is saying, roll away the stone and look at the destruction from the enemy. The enemy is saying, you know what? He's dead and he's gone. He's thinking by now. And perhaps, may I, may I, may I throw, may I challenge the body of Christ this morning? 
that lest we lose the focus, lest in a moment of waiting, we give the devil attention. And to that, I, I it leads me on to say that let's refuse to give him attention. Let's to give refuse. Let's refuse to give the devil, the devil attention, so that he does not get our direction. Right. So James chapter four verse seven reads: Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will indeed flee from you. So he says, resist, resist. In other words, right. You have to put in the effort. You have to punish the devil. You have to repeat the devil when those thoughts, when you know, when when those when those uh, um, suggestions come, you have to ban. You have to say devil. You have to say to yourself, no, I'm not taking that. So guess what? You know, I'm talking about waiting. As they were waiting, right, the bridegroom said to them, go and wait for me. Now, picture these ten women, right? They've received a promise. They have their in receipt of a promise, they've received their invitations, yet they are in a moment of waiting. People of God, every one of us would have to go through a moment of waiting. What waiting does to us is to test our level of perseverance, is to test our resolve, is to test our patience, and as well is to get us better prepared, fully prepared for the occasion. Oftentimes, God sets up an opportunity, and how many times have God set up an opportunity, and and then only for you to realize that you are not fully ready for it, you know, and then you go and you, you mess it up, and the and the damage thereof, right, lingers on years even after when you are when when the opportunity is long long and gone, it lingers on, right. So what 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 waiting does to us? is to give us the opportunity to sharpen our scale, is to smoothen all the rough edges, so much so that when he sets, when he, as the psalmist said, um, 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 in Psalm 23, right, he sets a table before us in the presence of our enemies, so much so that when the table is set, there is no room for imperfection, but rather, we cut out for that opportunity. And I pray that, you see, and oftentimes what the enemy does is, during the, during the period of waiting, where else we, we are to seize the moment to sharpen up, right? And to, and to make sure that we, we have every rough, we have all rough edges tidied up, right? What the enemy does is, he tends to shift our focus, right? From the bigger picture into our discomfort within that season. So of course, every moment of waiting is, is uncomfortable. Right? Moments of waiting are, are, are very difficult. Like I said, so just like the prophet, just like King Saul, right? King Saul felt, you know, what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead. Let's we can offer the sacrifice. You know, where else? What where else? King Saul could have used that moment, you know, to pray, to seek the face of God, to to speak to rally his men and say, you know what? This is it. This is the moment that God has prepared for us, right? And get themselves ready, warm up for the big occasion. Instead of doing that, the devil rather, uh, the, 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 the enemy rather, you know, got the attention into the fact that, look, the enemies are getting closer. Let's strike, let's strike, let's strike, let's strike. And I pray that even in our moments of waiting, we'll have the patience, we'll have, we'll have, we have the tenacity, right? We have the wisdom. God grant us the wisdom, right? To 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 smoothen all the rough edges. And by the way, some of the opportunities and some of the some of the favors that God is bringing our ways, right? It does require that we are prepared today, so that we can seize up those moments tomorrow. So back to the ten women. They were meant to wait. They were meant to wait. They were men, and they waited and they waited. Now, the irony of this story is that the man, the bridegroom, never said to them, I will show up at eight o'clock or nine o'clock or ten o'clock. The instruction was, was just a plain one go wait for me, and then I will show up. Go wait for me, go wait for me. And I, 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 I'm sure I'm speaking to somebody who also has a very has a blank check promise, right? Um, two years ago, three years ago. There was a promise from the Lord, I will bless you, I will establish you, right? I will do that, I will do that. You've received blanket prophecies. And by the way, a prophecy is only a prayer topic for you, by the way. That's how I classify a prophecy. Anytime you receive a prophecy, it's actually a prayer topic for you 
to go into it and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and bring it into manifestation. That's for me, that's a summary of a prophecy, right? So the women were given a blank check and they were saying, you will well, wait. And I'm sure, imagine 10 women, right? Who have gone, who have, who have left their homes, right? With joy, you know, they were going to meet a bridegroom. Oftentimes, by the way, right? The, the process of waiting always begins with joy. That's the first step of waiting. You begin with joy, you expect, and yes, tomorrow I'm going to receive that call. It begins with joy. And slowly, as time waves through, as time waves through, you realize that it is no more joy, but it becomes a game, it turns into a game of patience and a game of uncertainty, right? So when they left their homes, they were joyous. You know, you went for that interview, you 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 were you, you know you were saying to yourself, I've got it, and you are patiently waiting for that call. And within the moment of you know, within that time of waiting for that call, you know, you, you, you get to that point where you begin you, a bit of anxiousness, a bit of anxiety, a bit of uncertainty, a bit of, that's when the devil often steps in, a bit of devil also comes in, you're not going to get it, it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen, and then, you know, all of that sets in. But that is when you need to hold on and trust, right, and trust very well, right, the one who has promised you. So to the woman, remember it was not just an ordinary man, but it was a bridegroom. And by the way, bridegrooms in Jewish times had a responsibility to protect their weight. They could not just, and that is why it had to be a bridegroom who had invited them, right? So bridegroom, uh, bridegrooms, and, and by the way, this is a bridegroom who, who was throwing a very big banquet uh, celebration. So he couldn't have been an ordinary man. Chance were that he was either a prince or a king or somebody very influential in the society. So you couldn't have just, you know, let his word drop down and not fulfill it. So you had a responsibility to make sure that, you know, whatever he has said, you bring it into fruition. Can I just remind you that, look, there is a far greater um, bridegroom who has promised us, who has brought us into this light, right? And I must yet to see him fail or not deliver his word, right? So David said, I've been young and I've been old and I haven't seen the righteous been forsaking of the Lord. So may I, just, may I just remind you at this time that in case you're on the verge of waiting, in case you are on the verge of receiving a promise or a manifestation, it's okay for me to remind you this morning that to the one who has promised, he will deliver. Is that okay? Can you just take a breather and say to yourself, to the one who has promised, he will bring me to an expected end. Oftentimes, the enemy that walks in with all these doubts and all these evil thoughts and all these crazy demonic ideas that is it going to happen at my age? Am I still going to give birth? Right at my age? No, I don't think this. I've gone past my prime. There's not possible anymore. This one is okay. Can you just say to yourself, you know what? He who has promised me will bring me to an expected end. Is that okay? So the bridegroom had promised them. Now. Again, as I've said, somebody higher, somebody more powerful, somebody more, or somebody all-knowing has promised us, and he's a king of kings and the Lord of lords. And what does he promise us? That I will bring you to an expected end, right? That that which I've begun, I'll bring it to an expected end. So this morning, if they don't completed issues, they don't completed businesses, they don't completed tax in your life, and you you are on the verge of waiting, may I as well just remind you that he is surely going to bring it to an expected end. Is it okay? Please say after me. He is bringing it to an expected end. And that if you are, if you are at that point where you are waiting, uh, there, are, there are three things I want to share whilst you are waiting, your moment of waiting that we all need to do. Right? Number one is to trust Him. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, trust in the Lord with all, you, with all, with all your heart, with all, not some, not part, with all your heart. Number one, learn to, learn to trust him, especially when you're, when you're waiting. Number two, resist, threaten, refrain from anger, be still and know that he's God. He said, okay, so, you know, there are, there are times when you wake up and, 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 and the reality of the promise dawns at you and, and, and you look at your physical state, you look at your physical condition, right? And you are like Sarah, you're asking yourself, how is this going to happen, right? And those are the times the enemy is saying to you, uh, are you sure, you know, and, and you're anxious, you, you are fretting, you are, you, you are panicking. And those are the times you just need to calm down and say to yourself, be still, Psalm 37, be still and know that I am God. Is that okay? And lastly, be strong and take courage. In the moment of waiting, be strong. So in the book of Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, the 
Joshua, the, the Lord said to Joshua, have I not said to you three times, be strong, uh, uh, meditate on this, this book of the Lord shall not depart from, from your mouth, right? Rather be strong and be courageous, be strong and be courageous, be strong and courageous. Three times, so in a moment of waiting, there are times you need to be like David, stand up, go and look up yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I am not finished yet, right? It is okay. It is okay to sometimes, you know, we'll go through disappointing times. You'll we'll go through setbacks. But those are the moments, especially when you're on the verge of waiting, to encourage yourself. And David encouraged himself in the Lord, right? So mindful of time. So wait, wait, wait at, at, at number three, wait for God's promise right um steadfastly steadfastly and as well with thanksgiving colossians chapter 4 verses 2 that continue steadfastly in prayer right being watchful with thanksgiving i've heard of stories of testimony not just story but testimonies of a lady that prayed over her over her husband to come to know the lord and they in a in a testimony she had for 30 years she would always go on her knees and the prayers are, Lord, touch my husband. Lord, touch my husband. And for 30 years, she kept on praying the prayer. And that, I mean, you agree with me that that was tough waiting, right? And she just kept on praying the prayer until Lord one day touched the husband. So in moments of waiting, don't forget the four keys. Um, and um, it, it's important that you stick to this and then keep on, keep on, don't stop. Okay, so the woman, as we're waiting back to the story, mindful of time, as I try to wrap up my message, as we're waiting, um, scripture says, um, and they waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and waited. And guess what? The bridegroom don't show up. I don't know, but let's assume the women left their homes during the day or even at 6 p.m., right? So uh, scripture says at midnight, that means at 12 midnight, the bridegroom showed up. So between whatever time they left their homes and the bridegroom showing up, they certainly um, but they certainly would have waited for, 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 for a number of hours, right? And I'm sure within those hours, you know, um, candidate A will look at candidate B and ask yourself, is this man going to show up? Is this man going to show up? And then candidate B will respond, he has promised. I don't know about you, but the one who has promised me, he's, he's faithful and he will bring it to, he will bring me to an expected end, right? So candidate will look, candidate B, candidate B will look, candidate C, and they're like, okay, okay. But in any case, well, we've got into now, we have no, we have no other option but to wait for him, right? And as he waited, 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 and it's so beautiful. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Guess the time that the Lord shows up at midnight, at the dawn of another day, right? Just at the dawn. Now, you and I know that any time is one past 12, the one past midnight, that means it's another day, right? So, if it's a Wednesday tonight, and then it hits one past midnight, that means a Thursday. But guess what? He does things beautiful in his time. He's never late and he's never too early. But he shows up at the right time. 12 midnight, the bridegroom shows up. How beautiful it is. So it takes me back to the song that he makes all things beautiful. The scripture, he makes all things beautiful in his time. Sometimes we want it early. Sometimes we want it a bit delayed. And he's saying, no, not your way, not your will, but my way. Right? Not as you want it. But I know that, look, if I deliver this miracle to you too early, it will kill you. Right? So sometimes he deliberately delays on delays on giving us the miracle because he knows if he, do, if he gives it to us at a set time, the miracle will kill us. It will become our own enemy. Right? So he delays. And at the, at the best time, at the opportune time, at 12 midnight, he's never late, he's never early, but, but he's just right on time. And if I'm saying to somebody, uh, in case you are you're on the verge where it feels like you are late, the miracle is delayed, you know, that 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 dream, that, that hard desire is running into into overtime. Can I just say to you that he shows up, he makes all things beautiful, right, in his time. Don't break your heart. Don't break your heart. It's all coming together for your good, like a missing puzzle, right? He's all he's putting the pieces together. Anyway, so at midnight, the bridegroom shows up perfect time perfect right time never late never 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 early but shows up right on time and then at that point says to ladies lady pick up your your lanterns right and follow me to the destination now that's a very serious serious issue right so again don't forget when i began this message i talked about the fact that one of the reasons why the brides the bridesmaid were picked what was selected was to was to lead the bridegroom into the beautiful hall or into a beautiful banquet ceremony and therefore especially in jewish under the jewish culture the bridesmaid were taxed with the responsibility of carrying lanterns because 
the bridegroom always had um, had this culture or had this um, had this character where he never told them the time that he would show up. It was almost like a surprise. So one of the one of the key things every bridesmaid, right, in biblical times, was made to understand that was always make sure that you carry an extra. So you carry your lamp, right, and as well carry a bit of extra oil in case the bridegroom tarries or delays. So here in there were 10 women, right? At this point, it's also worth me mentioning that the 10, when they were selected, they were all they were all referred to as the 10 virgins. There was no segregation, there was no differentiation. Differentiation only set in when five had extra oil, whilst the other five did not, right? So they began the journey, right? On, uh, at the same level, same uh, opportunities were given them, and they all had to make do with what they had. However, the responsibility was on them all, all together, to make sure that they had enough oil for their lantern. Now, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, scripture says that let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. It is very important that in the times and dispensation that we find ourselves, never has there been an opportunity to let our light so shine than today. Never has there been an opportunity for us to make bold statements that look, we are believers, we are Christians. Oh yes, we are Christians and we are not ashamed of it. Never has there been a time for us to make a stand for Jesus in our workplaces, in our homes, in our communities. Never has there been the time. Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Now, remember Leon has said that the standards of God have not changed. Our society has changed so much that even in our age, and even for a Christian nation like the UK, sometimes you end up, you know, sometimes we end up becoming the old one when we say, we are Christians, or we go to church, or we or we stand for the Lord. But today, may I encourage you that if there is any time for us to take a stand for the Lord, this is it, and that we should boldly, right, and confidently let known our 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 relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. So they were meant the five women, the all ten women were meant to carry lanterns. Carry lanterns. Now think about it. The purpose of the lanterns was one and straightforward. It was for it was for it was for them to light up their way to the banquet hall when darkness shows up can i repeat that again they it was meant for them to light up their way to the banquet hall when darkness shows up now um is 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 again is we, we live in a world now where you know it, it, it's very difficult uh with 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 well um, let, 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 let me let me let me put it this way we live in a world now where as Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 reads that let your light so shine right so many believers are carrying lanterns but with no lights in their lanterns right so many believers have been called into the kingdom but with no light their lights are dimmed we can barely see their lights right so the bridegroom is saying the reason why I selected you was to, as Matthew 5 verse 16 says, was to light the way so that we can make our way to the banquet hall. In other words, we are meant to shine forth wherever we find ourselves so that others will be drawn into the light. We are meant to shine brightly in every situation, in every circumstance, so that those in darkness would come and experience the light, right? So they had the lanterns, and as they slept and slept and slept, when they woke up, they realized that their lanterns had no extra oil, right? Now, one of the dangerous things that can happen to any one of us is to sleep through the promise, is to sleep through the waiting moment. So in Acts chapter 20, verses 9, and I wrap up my message, Acts chapter 20, verses 9. There was a young man by name Etikus. And Etikus, one day he had gone to hear Paul preaching. And Etikus sank into deep sleep as Paul kept on preaching. And when he woke, before he realized, he fell from the third story, right? And he died. In fact, he died in his sleep. In Acts chapter 20, verses 9, Etikus died. In his sleep, 
right? And I truly believe that never has there been a time and a moment where God is calling the body of Christ and individuals to wake up than now. That we are to we are not to sleep over the promise, over the gifting, over the calling. Now nothing is as dangerous as 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 doing what Eticus did is it's to sleep whilst receiving the manifestation of the it was are going to hear Paul preach and as he kept on you know as he kept, as he as he in the while the meeting carried on he slept and his sleep was so bad that he fell from the third floor and he died I pray that we will not sleep over the promise so the women slept over the promise uh, and when they woke up five did not have extra oil uh, the alarm simply put their lamps had run out so they needed to go and light their lamps in order to make their way to the banquet or now there's a crucifix of the messages what i really wanted to get to let me end with this earlier on when i began the message i said the reason for the selection of the 10 was to lead the bridegroom to the banquet hall that is it. that was the bottom line that was that was it that was the main reason for selecting the 10. So anything other than that was a failure. Can I repeat that again? Anything other than making their way to the banquet hall was a failure, nothing more, nothing less. They were to make sure that they get to the bridegroom. Along the way, right, they were shot five, at that point who, who were now referred to as foolish ones, were shot of extra oil. So, and because they were shot of extra oil, they could not lead or they could not make their way to the bridegroom. Put it this way. They slept on the promise, right? They slept on the promise. They made errors. They they made mistakes. They should have had an extra oil, but they failed and they slept. When they woke up, they realized that they had made an error. So they ran their way, they ran their hearts out to the town center to, to get an extra oil. However, when they came back, a voice, an unknown voice, stood behind the gate and said to them, ladies, you are late go back and now that's a bit i really want to i want to end with today right can i just encourage a brother a sister that you are never late right as long as god and time is with us oh yes we may have made mistakes don't get me wrong but the fact that what the enemy does very well is to go before god and accuse us like he did to job accuse us before god because he's the accuser of the brethren that we slept over the oil that we should have been praying when we were dancing that we should have been awake and mistakenly we slept right and that what he does is he takes advantage of our errors of our mistakes and goes to the master to accuse us that because we've done this and we've done that, we don't qualify. Can I repeat it again? So when the women woke up, they had made an error. They had made a mistake. And by the way, it is okay to make a mistake in this journey of life. Right? It is okay. What is not allowed is for you to stay in the error or for you to fail to rise up from the error. Is that okay? So. Yeah, in, in the scriptures, the scripture says in the book of um, in the Old Testament that four um, four lepers, right? Four lepers said to themselves, "What we do is not good enough." So it is okay, and that, that, that's not to say that's not a license to say keep on making errors or keep on staying in that situation. No, one is okay, but you can't stay in there, right? So they made an error, they made a mistake. Woke up, went to get themselves some extra oil, which was which was a sign of ownership, right? So they woke up, realized that we've messed up. We've messed up. We shouldn't have slept, right? Woke up, went to get some extra oil, and then got to the gate. Don't forget, the primary calling was to get to the banquet or anything else was a failure. And then a voice said to them, you are late, therefore go back. And oftentimes, like I said, the accuser of the burden, that's why it does to us, constantly accusing us before God, constantly accusing us, going before God, using our errors, using our mistakes, and saying before God, we don't qualify because we are late. We are late. 
But what the women failed to realize was that regardless of the fact that they were late or not, they were chosen and had been given tickets or authorization notes or call it passes to the banquet hall, right? So when they got there and they were late, yes, they were late. So the strange voice said to them, you are late, go back. And they took the word of the strange man. They took the word of the accuser of their brethren. Perhaps somebody is doing the listening and I'm sure constantly you get accusation from the devil. You did that, you did that, you did that. And he's constantly reminding you of your past, right? And, and, and he does us so much to bring us to a stage where we, you know, we, we, we belittle ourselves before the promise and we get to a stage where we feel we don't qualify. Right, but don't forget the, the the bigger picture was for them to get to the banquet hall. So when when they got there, the voice said to them they were late. The their response should have been yes, we are late, right? Yes, we have messed up. Yes, we slept over the promise, but we we issued tickets. We our final destination is or was the banquet hall, right? And nothing else is going to change that. And as long as we have tickets. That gives us the right to get into the banquet hall. And uh, I, I, I bring my message, I end on this. I pray that as from today, may every voice of the accuser, right? Um, and uh, like I said, what the enemy does is the accuser of the brethren, as the book, as the church says in Job, what he does very well is constantly accuse us. I pray that as from today, uh, God will help us uh, that the voice of the accuser against our lives, right? Uh, and what he does very well is to use our past. To criticize us to use our past to remind us of the errors that we made it's okay but as from today may we also come to that stage and and that is why they were called foolish virgins one of the reasons right so they should have walked into a possession that they had tickets for but they took the voice of the accuser today may god help us to say no to every accusations of the devil against us right and his primary purpose to, is to deny us entry to the banquet hall I pray that God give us the strength, right? So much so that, that we'll be able to rise up against every negative accusations of the devil. That the accusation of the devil will not ring loud in our ears, but rather the promises of God will ring louder in our ears and will keep us focused to the journey. God bless you. Uh, more power to you. Amen.